everybody, this is Anthony with you again, and welcome back to another video of Refuting the Feast Days. This is argument number seven, entitled, The Term Forever. Now, the purpose of this is to refute the argument because this is one of the most popular ones. Because the term forever is found, that means they have to be done forever, for eternity. At least, that's what they propose. So let's look at Old Testament ammunition that they use. First is Exodus 12, 14 and 17. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, and ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In response to this first passage, then you have to obey Leviticus 23.8, which reads, But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. You can't do one without the latter. Right? You cannot separate the duties of the sacrifices, also duties of the Levitical priesthood, from the feast days. That is a scripture fact. You have to be willfully ignorant to deny this. Next is Leviticus 23, 14, 21, 31, 41. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. 41. Lastly, and ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. It says forever in all these verses, so you better perform every duty contained. Why is it that they want to say these feasts last forever, but they want to, but they refuse to do the duties connected to them forever, as it says in the verses? Not only is that hypocrisy, it's also double standard. And they claim to be Torah keepers? Are you kidding me? They are Torah breakers. Quit claiming yourself to be something that you're not. You are living a lie. Breaking commandment number nine, bearing false witness. And you better watch yourselves, because if you live a lie, and have a false testimony, bearing false witness in... Revelation 21.8, as a verse we read before, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Now the word does mean literally forever, in regards of eternity, but context is next of kin to literally understand what is meant. See some examples given below for sake of time. Feel free to look them up and study to show yourself approved unto God. The next point is proof of context. Let's read Genesis 3.22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. There it is. The context is living forever, literally. Context is living. It's literal, being directed to the fact that Adam would live forever if he ate of the forbidden tree which is why he was shooed out of the garden, him and his wife. Next is Exodus twelve fourteen. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Throughout your generations is the context. Are we in the generations of the children of Israel? No, we are not. See some examples given below. Have you ever said to somebody, you will follow the rules forever while you're in this house? Just an example of a metaphor usage. Then Exodus 12, 24. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. To thee and to thy sons is the context. Every word counts 
in the authorized version text of Scripture. Hebrews 5, 6, As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. You mean Christ is a priest forever? Yes, because he preserves the saints forever. Even the priests of the Old Testament preserved the children of Israel by being the mediator. See the scripture given below. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, this is a perfect example of forever meaning eternal. How do we know that? By looking at the context of the verse itself. Yesterday, past, and today, present, and forever, future. It's that simple. It's amazing what simple English can resolve regarding a text. And people say God is not able to tell you in your language what the scripture says. You must have a very stupid version of God. Because your God is unintelligent and an idiot. Who can't tell you in your language perfectly what his word says. Now let's use some modern examples. Have you said to yourself, I feel like I've been here forever. Or this book is going to take forever to read. Or, this movie is lasting forever. Lastly, I'm going to be in his traffic jam forever. You see, the term forever is literal, obviously, but you're comparing it to your present situation. So something may be a long time, so you relate it with forever, as a metaphor. Now, in order to understand any scripture text, you always have to ask yourself three questions. First, what the passage does not say. Second, what is the story context of the word being used directed to? Three, was it fulfilled or changed? Just follow those three examples and that will solve any scripture problem. Point three is more logical sense examples. We have to let logic rule the day. Because logic itself is based on scripture and God himself is logic in his own nature. So he expects us to think logically, as I pointed out before. Exodus 21.6 Then his master shall bring him under the judges, he shall also bring him to the door or under the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Now does this mean that he's going to serve him for all eternity, even after death? No, of course not. It's talking about for the rest of his life. Duh! When the scripture says, throughout your generations, when it comes to the feasts, I believe it's referring to their generations of when they were alive. By the way, how can he serve him forever if he's dead? You can't put a condition or a dead end on forever. Otherwise, if it means eternal, then God lied. Very simple. Let's not be stupid in our thinking. Next is Exodus 27, 19-21. All the vessels of the tabernacle, and all the service thereof, and all the pins thereof, and all the pins of the court, shall be of brass. And thou shalt command the children of Israel, that they bring the pure olive oil beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always. In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall order it. From evening to morning before the Lord, it shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. Now, if forever is going to be applied, as it still applies to us today, according to Torah keepers, then why isn't this being done still in a tabernacle? Why don't we have priests performing these duties still? Do I sense a double standard, professing Torah keeper? I think so. Next is Exodus 28, 43. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever unto him and his seed after him. Read the whole chapter of 28. It speaks of all the duties of Aaron and his sons for the Levitical priesthood. Now, if forever means that it still applies to us, then why aren't these duties still being done? Again, 
fake professing Torah keepers, in reality they're really Torah breakers, they want to apply forever to the feast, but they don't want to apply forever to the rest of these passages. You are a lying, double standard hypocrite. Also, if Jesus Christ did away with these duties, then forever cannot possibly mean for all eternity, non-stop. Right? Fourth, Exodus 29, 25-28. And thou shalt receive them of their hands, and burn them upon the altar for a burnt offering, for a sweet savour before the Lord. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And thou shalt take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration, and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be thy part. And thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering, and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved, and which is heaved up, of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron, and of that which is for his sons. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons by statute forever, there it is, from the children of Israel, for it is an heave offering, and it shall be an heave offering from the children of Israel, of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto the Lord. If this statute is still to be done forever, then why isn't this offering still being done? Again, show some consistency in your arguments, professing Torah keeper. If Jesus Christ, once again, did away with these duties, then forever cannot possibly mean for all eternity non-stop. And there's plenty more where that came from about evidence. Now, if your response is, well, according to the Hebrew, you know, we need to go back to the Hebrew to understand Scripture. <laughs> you think God is really that stupid? Then He's not able to communicate to you clearly in your language. So basically, you worship a stupid God who's not intelligent enough that has a duh -duh nature to tell you in your language what He meant? Wow, you must have a real moron for a god. And you want to trust him to save your soul in the end? You really trust this god to take care of you and supply all your needs. But he can't do something so simple as telling you your language perfectly, what he expects from you, and what his scripture clearly says. A self-contradicting oxymoron you have for a god. And this is a big reason why people become atheists. Because you want them to be suckered in to believe in your foolish, unintelligent, stupid being professing to be God. And you want them to take you seriously? Don't kid yourself. You're just making a fool out of yourself and making the true existing God of the Bible look stupid. Don't do that. Conclusion there are many passages that refer to forever as meaning eternally. I'm sure you can find more verses that teach that. But the way you understand what under forever means is not by looking at the Hebrew or Greek, because you do not have to. All you have to do is look at the context of what it's talking about and compare scripture with scripture within the English perfected text of the authorized version itself. Alright, brethren. So this is another ending of a video that clearly refutes another feast argument. Love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God and keep the commandments, and read the King James Bible. Thanks.